Greetings all, this is Matthew from Jefferson State Air Rifles and I wanted to give you a closer look at the newly revised Raptor magazines. So we're coming in with 22 cal, 25, 30, and 357. They're able to hold as many as 14 rounds in the 22, 12 in the 25, 10 in the 30, and 8 in the 357. And I'll point out that these clear lids there are two different kinds. For the most part, everything's going to receive just a solid clear lid, but the 257 mostly receives this lid that has a recess, which permits uh, a longer projectile to fit inside the magazine. And then the rest of the housing is uh, aluminum billet with uh, machined and nice black anodized and they now feature this o-ring to help hold the projectile and I elongated the internal machined feature on the housing, the pellet stop I increased the length and I put a nice chamfer on it uh, I made it as long as I could without denigrating the structure of the wheel and put a nice chamfer so that it just helped provide the smoothest entry into the chamber as possible and to demonstrate the, the filling, uh, I have it stop in the middle there so that after you've shot your last pellet, you don't just waste your air. Uh, so we'll rotate to an open slot. I've got some 30 pellets here. I can just drop those in. And you might have to use the tip of your finger to help it pass that O-ring a little bit. And I personally, and you just keep going, I like to get to the for the 30, there's, it can hold 10, so I'll get to the ninth one, and then I like to give it a little tap just to make sure all the pellet heads get past that O-ring. Some of them I can feel them going past, but if they didn't get all the way, I'll get to this ninth one, and then I'll, I'll rotate it, and then just give it a little tap, make sure all the heads got seated. If I were to put that tenth one in and tap it, sometimes that can fall all the way through. So, also, if your spring were to come undone or you disassembled it and you're not certain how to reassemble it, I want to demonstrate that. So a two millimeter drive will remove the, the screw and the lid. And then there's preload built into the system and there's little internal machine features that have that internal stop. So take the tension off that stop, lift it a little bit, and let it rotate past to take that preload out. Now should be at neutral because I only jumped the stop once. And now I can just lightly take that apart and it's nice that the spring remained inside the wheel I found that that makes it a little easy, easier for reassembly. And you'll see that now there's three little holes concentric around the center hub but in a triangular fashion so that this end of the spring will go through. The other end of the spring is through that little hole. And I found for the most part this lower position is a good starting point but depending on how heavy your projectiles are, you need a little bit more or a little bit less spring force, you might choose a different hole here. But for the most part, that bottom one's a good starting point. Now I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise until I feel the stop. And then I'm gonna gently lift it, pit, turn it past that stop, and now we have the preload built in. So if that was a little bit too much, I could have dropped back a hole or maybe drop back two holes and jump the stop twice to get just a little bit more uh, if they're heavier projectiles. But you don't want too much spring force on your lighter projectiles that might actually cause them to be dented. Every little bit counts. So this two millimeter screw and we're back together. So there you have it. I hope you enjoy them. Thanks guys, have fun, shoot responsibly.